Hi everyone and welcome to the Upper Geyser Basin area. Believe it or not, today is a bluebird sky day. I know it doesn't look like it, but I'll tell you more about that in a minute. We're going to be heading off on the Mystic Falls hike. And uh, I've pointed this out to you before. For some reason at the trailhead over here, they don't have a sign saying Mystic Falls the way they do over there, which says Daisy. But just remember, you're right across the road from the Daisy Geyser Trailhead. That's Biscuit Basin over there. And Old Faithful is just up the road over there. My old friend Trixie, also known as Cammy, is with me today. And there's two ways that uh, you could start this hike. You can either start over here, and we'll see it says that Mystic Falls is 1.4 miles down this loop over there. Here's, uh, there's Biscuit Basin. So you can start over here, and this will take us to the back end of Biscuit Basin itself. So, which also means that uh, you could start the hike in Biscuit Basin itself, walk past Sapphire Pool to the, I guess it would be the east end, and uh, then uh, make a small turn, and from there you would uh, take, the, take the trail to Mystic Falls. Now, remember, bear spray. We're headed into the back country, we're taking our bear spray. Trixie, do you have your bear spray? Outstanding. And while this is a personal choice, I generally take the safety off. That way if we do come across a bear and need to use the spray in a hurry, it's uh, a lot easier to, uh, to get the bear spray going. You don't have to worry when you may be panicked to, uh, about, uh, about getting the safety off. Now, those of you who've seen quite a few of these videos may recognize this. Uh, this was done separately as a freestanding video to show you another way to get into Biscuit Basin. And you can see that in our virtual Yellowstone Tours channel. If you go to virtualyellowstonetours.com, that's virtualyellowstonetours.com. Excuse me, you can see it in our YouTube channel. Now, I'd mentioned before that today is actually supposed to be a bluebird sky day. And the reason that there's all this haze around is because of a big fire that's burning not too far away from Old Faithful. It's uh, been given the name the Lone Star Fire. Called that because it's... Uh, it's burning pretty close to the Lone Star Geyser. And uh, all this haze, all this really smoke that's, uh, that's coming off the fire. And it's been around for a couple of weeks. It should be a beautiful time of the year to be out. It's the beginning of September, it's the fall. The temperature is just great for taking a short trip into the close by backcountry. And it's a shame that there's all the smoke around. What we're on is actually the Continental Divide Trail. It's obviously a very small section of it. And uh, where I previously showed you the sign saying Daisy Geyser, that was the, uh, that's also part of the, con the Continental Divide Trail. The Divide Trail is a hiking trail that runs all the way from the Mexican border in the south up to the Canadian border in the north. So it traverses uh, from south to north or north to south an enormous section of the United States. And you have some people trying to do it in one season and others uh, do it over the course of several years. These are what we call bobby socks trees. I suppose you'd have to be pretty old to remember the bobby socks fashion, but uh, it refers to the white socks, 
that used to be worn and you can see at the bottom of these trees that they're white and what's uh, made them go white and remember those orange markers I'll get back to them and what makes them go white is the center in the area this is all center over here and center is one of the minerals that gets brought up from underground by uh, water erupting from geysers or coming up from hot springs I've, I uh, mentioned that, uh, remember, remember the little orange markers, we can see one on this tree coming up ahead of us and uh, this will be an area where in the winters if you're staying at Old Faithful you can come cross-country skiing and the orange uh, shows you where the trail is because there's just so much snow here in the winter it's impossible to see where where the trail is the way that we can in the summers there's another one up there It may be useful to take a look at a map of the area to see where we are. If you go to one of our sites, westyellowstonelodge.com forward slash map, that's westyellowstonelodge.com forward slash map, and I'll drop in a section over here. you can see just where Biscuit Basin is and where this, where this trail is. We are very close to Old Faithful. Daisy, that Daisy Geyser Trail that I showed you at the start of this video will lead us uh, into the Upper Geyser Basin itself. Almost half of the world's thermal features are located right here at Yellowstone in the Upper Geyser Basin has about 150 geysers in a space of uh, just one square mile. So we're very close to the Upper Geyser Basin, basically in between where you see Biscuit Basin on the map and uh, Old Faithful and the Upper Geyser Basin. Is Trixie still with us, do you suppose? I was telling you about this Continental Divide Trail how oh, some people will try and do it in one season and others will do it over the space of a couple of years you try and come through this area which is one of the higher areas of the trail uh, somewhere around the end of June into July, beginning of August so you don't have to deal with trudging through the deep snow. I've mentioned in other videos that our company operates Yellowstone Taxi and we'll get people calling us from the Divide Trail where it comes out about 10 miles to the west of the town of West Yellowstone. Oh, what is that, a bluebird? A mountain? No. That lovely blue tail there. Um, the Continental Divide Trail comes out about uh, or crosses um, US Highway 20 about 10 miles to the west of the town of West Yellowstone and we'll get people coming out on the trail who will give our taxi company a call wanting to come into West Yellowstone and uh, spend some time in a motel or an Airbnb get a decent meal and they will have sent supplies ahead to the post office very often and they'll pop in and pick them up so this is uh, Biscuit Basin over here and uh, we can see some people who've got a backpack, at least one of them uh, several backpacks and it looks like they've decided to access the trail from Biscuit Basin as opposed uh, to the more sort of backcountry routes uh, that, that we took. There's some beautiful dead trees around, aren't there? I 
And I think I'm going to stop here and wait a moment for Trixie. And Trixie has joined us. And we can continue along the hike. Park Service is really good about putting up these boards and having said that, is there anything left on this one? Yeah, I guess there is. Morning. Hi there. And after just a couple of minutes of walking, we're in the back country.
And up ahead of us is where the trail splits up into a big loop. If we go to the right over here, uh, it's a steeper way to get to an overlook. If we go to the left, we'll head down to Mystic Falls and then we can continue up. Uh, I suggest you do this in a clockwise direction as it's a little easier to walk up the elevation that you're going to be coming to. And I'm going to stop here and wait for Trixie anyway. How are you done? Yeah, how are you doing? Well, that Summit Lake Trail takes you quite some distance uh, and it will eventually bring you to uh, the Yellowstone boundary where it uh, basically crosses, well, you're already in Idaho, but uh, once you leave Yellowstone, you'll be in the state of Idaho proper. Sounds like we're meeting up with the Little Fire Hole River and Mystic Falls flows over, well, the Little Fire Hole River flows over Mystic Falls. And this is going to be alongside us for a while. The Little Fire Hole meets up with the Fire Hole River itself just before you get to Biscuit Basin, which I've mentioned to you a couple of times.
And it's time for another Trixie break. Boy, it's a shame it's so hazy and so smoky, isn't it? It should be a beautiful blue sky today. We'd had blue skies forecast all week. And the day I decide to come out and do this video, the wind changes and the smoke from the Lone Star Fire heads off in our direction. This is pretty though, isn't it? Even with all the smoke right next to the little fire hole. And this is a hiker made trail as opposed to a park set up trail just down to the river and with Trixie being a little bit behind me I think I'm going to come down and take a look. Boy, the smoke is getting really thick now. Apart from being able to see it, you can really smell it. meant uh, when we were at that point where we could have gone one way or the other on this big loop, namely that the incline is less here, it's a bit steeper the other way, although obviously you cover the same elevation. Can you see where that guy is in red up at the top there?
and you can start to see the falls coming into view. with me I'm just dropping it so I can take a picture or two and continuing on the trail to get a bit closer to Mystic Falls and then depending on how Trixie is feeling we'll probably take the loop but you can see up there back uh, to the overlook of Mystic Basin and go back that way Hi, no problem. But that's where the trail continues. This is another one of those hiker made trails. So if you can just detour to get a bit closer, but do be careful if you do this. It's pretty darn loose. Yeah, it's be easy to fall. Thank you, appreciate that. about a 70 foot drop. You can see that the falls are really more of a cascade than a fall as a true waterfall as it comes over multiple levels. So I'm now continuing the loop, which will take us to the overlook of Biscuit Basin. As you can see, there's a bit of a climb ahead of us.
really climbing into the smoke now, aren't we? We've already climbed up a bit, haven't we? Passing by, guys. Oh, Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Can you see the Grand Loop Road in the distance there through all the smoke? I see some cars driving. This goes down to an overlook of the falls. That's the main trail over there. Once again, really, really slippery.
and now we're at the top of Mystic Falls. This over here is actually a thermal feature. Notice that yellowish uh, colour. That in all likelihood is going to be sulphur. And it's really slippery. So this is as far down as I'm going to be going. difficult to see but we can see the Grand Loop Road there. I can see cars driving along off in the distance but really difficult to see through the snow. So. And now here's the fun part, going back up. You can see where we were down at the bottom there. see people coming up the trail to see Mystic Falls for the first time. You're not going to be doing too much cross-country skiing up here, are you? Hi there. Things are going in the summer. Things are starting in December. I just did not understand. I think we saw those people at Bister Basin while I was waiting for Trixie to catch up.
you guys need some water? I've got an unopened bottle. No, we're doing just fine, thanks. We've got plenty. Okay. Passed us, and then where'd you go? In the woods? Oh, there was a beautiful oh, the... overlook of the falls. Oh, okay. okay. A little slippery, though. Yeah. <laughs> You're brave. Be <laughs> See you guys. There's some wonderful snags here, aren't there? Unlike the monument geyser basin hike, you can actually see where the top is. And if there weren't all that smoke, you could see the Grand Loop Road from here as well. And thermal features up on the hill. Actually a geyser erupting over there. Over there, how about that? And that's clearly part of the upper geyser basin. And it's time to stop and get some water.
There is a trail at Mr. Basin. Just lowering my unipod again. Hope I can pick that up for you. A little difficult to see through the smoke, but that looks like the boardwalk over there. Behind it you can see the Grand Loop Road. Backing up the, uh, the monopod again. Time for another sip of water on the go this time. That noise that you've heard is the water sloping around in my bottles. Gosh, that tastes good. I'm sure you guys probably know this already, but try freezing your water bottle before you leave the night before. And by about this time on the trail, it started to uh, defrost. The ice.
calls yet. Yeah, we're going to do a U turn ahead of And here is the really great overlook of Mr. Basin, which you can see over there. So faithful is up there somewhere. And you can see the sun reflecting on the Firehall River. And then the Midway Geyser Basin. So, hey, how you doing? Excuse me, you know where to see the bears? Huh, do you, <laughs> do you have, have your bear spray with you? <laughs> oh gosh. You really need to carry bear spray if you're coming into this sort of country because you never know when you may see one. You guys doing your chain? Yeah. Good.
a lot easier our way. There's uh, the Grand Loop Road again. Looking at this trail compared to the other one on the way up, this is why I prefer to go down here and, and up from Mystic Falls. In other words, do the loop in a clockwise direction. where we were at the very top. Thank you, ma'am. Right behind you. Thank you.
Is the view good? Yeah, it's stunning. You guys recognize where we are now? Oh. This is where we first stopped yeah. and chatted. Okay. It's good to see you because we, we did it the wrong way. Yeah. You know? No, it's all good. That's the way back then. Yeah. You want to take a picture? <laughs> sure. Those poor people got lost at the top. I told them where to go and how to do the loop, and so they climbed all the way up to the top. And then. Uh, Got a little lost and stuck close to me on the way down. So this is uh, where the loop started. We went down there. You could go in that direction as well. And this is the end of today's virtual Yellowstone tour. I hope you've enjoyed this virtual Yellowstone tour. If you do enjoy our virtual Yellowstone tour series, please consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. You can also find all of our virtual Yellowstone tours at virtualyellowstonetours.com That's virtualyellowstonetours.com Otherwise, see you in Yellowstone!